Hello everyone and welcome to this session of mechanical vibration. In this class we are going to cover Coulomb damping or the friction damping. There are different types of damping among them this is one of the damping which is there because of the dry friction between two surfaces. So before we study the Coulomb damping let's understand that what are different types of damping. So conventionally we are having three different types of damping one is the viscous damping which is there because of the fluid friction and this is most common type of damping we consider when we study the vibration. So what is viscous damping? Suppose we are having a piston cylinder kind of arrangement and there is a slight gap between the piston and the cylinder wall. So when we will push the piston and if the cylinder is filled with some oil there will be a flow of oil through this passage and there will be a fluid friction because of the viscosity of the fluid and that is actually doing some work because of the viscosity of the fluid and known as the viscous damping. Another type of damping is there because of the hysteretic loss that means if we are having a solid piece and we let's we are having a cantilever beam. When the beam will vibrate because of the intermolecular friction there will be some dissipation of work external work or energy and that is known as the hysteretic damping. Third one is the dry friction or coulomb damping which we are going to cover today in this class. But whenever we are having a contact between dry surfaces and there is a relative motion because of the friction the energy will lost or dissipated and we call the mechanism as the friction damping or the coulomb damping. Another difference between these three types of damping is that when we are having the viscous damping the viscous damping is actually proportional or the viscous force or damping force is proportional to the velocity. That means if we are having a piston cylinder arrangement if the velocity of the piston is larger the force because of the viscosity will be more. On the other hand when we are having structural damping in case of structural damping the damping is proportional to the displacement. If the beam is having a larger displacement there will be larger molecular intermolecular friction and that will create the large amount of dissipation of energy. So in case of structural damping the damping force is proportional to displacement. In case of viscous damping the damping force is proportional to velocity but in case of coulomb damping that is there because of the friction the damping force remains constant. It will not affect it by the neither by the velocity nor by the displacement. So I hope that now we are having a basic understanding between three types of damping and let's do a mathematical modeling of the coulomb damp. So here I am showing a spring mass system suppose the mass is known uh, defined by m and this is your spring and it is vibrating for example the system is vibrating with respect to this mean position and because of the contact of this body with the ground there is a dry friction uh, present between the two surfaces and, and it is actually going to dissipate the uh, energy of your system. Now our job is to just make a mathematical model of this uh, type of damping. So please remember that when we have a traditional type of viscous damping we generally define the uh, equation of motion as mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f if the force vibration or zero if we are having free vibration condition. So this is the equation of motion of a simple spring mass and damper system where this term is actually indicating the damping force. But here instead of having a damper kind of mechanism we are having friction damping and more importantly the direction of the friction force is opposite to the direction of the velocity. So it is not possible to write a single equation and single sign convention to define the entire motion because when mass is moving from left to right the direction of the friction will be opposite when it is moving from right to left the direction will be different. So here we have to consider two conditions suppose in the case one the mass is moving away from the mean position. This is your mean position and mass is moving in this direction. So let's for a given instant of time your mass is here. And let the, this is the extreme position on the right hand side and this is the extreme position on the left hand side. So when the mass will move toward the right direction let this is the direction of motion and direction of velocity. So as the mass is moving towards the right there is a direction of friction which is opposite to that. So let's this is your friction or I can say that is mu and then n is the normal reaction. At the same time if I will define the force because of the spring the spring is actually going to be extended it is going to apply a force in this direction. 
so this force will be kx and if i am interested to write the equation of this uh, force or if i will apply the dl lambert principle which is actually going to convert this dynamic system into a static system my equation of motion will be what i am going to write the mx double dot which is the inertia force and all the forces which are acting opposite to this will be negative so in my equation this will be minus kx and minus my friction force on the other end if the mass is at the extreme right and moving towards the left so this is the extreme right position and suppose for a given instant of time mass is here and moving in this direction this is the direction of displacement uh, velocity and here the direction of the friction will what the direction of friction will be this one but the direction of the spring force will be this one. so this is the direction of your spring force or elastic force this is the direction of the motion and this is the direction of the friction here when we will see that what is the direction of the inertia force the inertia force is actually acting opposite to the direction of the accelerating body so here also when i will write the equation for a force balance i will write that m x double dot that is towards the uh, right side and the minus k x plus f so my final equation when i will see these two conditions the first equation can be written as m x double dot plus k x is equal to minus f and second equation will be m x double dot plus k x is equal to f that means a single equation cannot be considered for the entire cycle of the body when the mass is moving from left to right so this equation is valid when mass is moving from left to right and the second equation is valid when mass is moving from right to left so what we need to do here we have to put something more so that a single equation can be used and for that purpose what we do we put another function that is the signum function that is m x double dot plus k x is equal to minus s g n x dot f this is what this is actually defined here the sign when x dot is greater than zero it will be having a positive sign when x dot is less than 0 there will be a negative sign so when the mass is moving from left to right my x dot will be positive because i am assuming that this is positive direction on the other hand when the mass is moving from right to left it will be negative so ultimately when i will put these two condition i will get the same equation because when x is greater than 0 there will be a positive sign so ultimately it will be minus f so i am going to resemble the same equation on the other end for the second case i am going to get the second equation so this is how we write the equation of motion for the coulomb damping another important part of the coulomb damping is that how to visualize the decay of your system so this is our equation of motion for the coulomb damping and as i said that to want if you want to visualize the decay in case of uh, coulomb damping let's see the decay in case of viscous damping so that we will having a basic understanding in case of viscous damping the decay is exponential that means if the amplitude is reducing and you want to visualize this decay it is actually going to exp uh, follow an exponential curve however in case of coulomb damping we have seen that the damping force is constant and if i will try to visualize i can use this equation to understand the uh, decay in the coulomb damping